In this video, I show you how to do 3D scanning with the Kinect for Xbox 360 and we're starting right now. Hello, my name is Daniel. Welcome to the Crosslink channel. I'd like to help you be more successful with 3D printing. And if you're here for the first time, subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss anything. So in the last week's video, I talked about the Kinect for Xbox One and how to do 3D scanning with the sensor. And in today's video, we're starting to scan with the Xbox 360 sensor. And I'm going to show you what software you need, how to set it up and how to get going using this sensor. So let's start with the scanning software, which is Scanact. And Scanact is the only software that's left that's going to support the Connect for Xbox 360. And you can see there's two different versions of the software that you can get. There's a pro version and there's a non-commercial use version. It might look that this is for free, but it's actually a little bit limited in terms of how detailed the objects are going to be that you can export. And if you look a little bit closer, you can see that the non-commercial version is limited to 5,000 polygons, which might be a little bit too less to get high quality objects. So if you are happy with the overall results from the software, you probably want to buy the software to get the best results. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the non-commercial version to show you the potential quality of the scans because we cannot export them in the highest quality until we have the pro version. So one thing about the software I wanna notice here is it only supports specific sensors. So in our case, it's fine because it supports the Kinect for Xbox 360, but it doesn't support the Kinect for Xbox One. On the opposite side, we used the last time a software from Microsoft to scan with the Kinect for Xbox One. That doesn't support anymore the Xbox 360 Kinect sensor. So you are basically left with this software, which supports the old sensor. So let's download that and install it first. And after the installation has completed, we will need another piece of software, which is the Kinect for Windows SDK 1.8. I've also linked it in the description down below. So please, if you download it, use the 1.8 instead of the 2.0, because the 1.8 is the version that Scanac needs for using this specific sensor. So finally, to get the sensor going with your PC, you need an adapter cable, and that can be bought pretty cheap on Amazon or eBay. And if you need the sensor, uh, you can also find it used on eBay pretty cheap, so it's not a problem to get the sensor. So now let's connect the sensor to the computer and set up the software to get going. So I'm back in the middle of the room. We have the usual suspects here. We're scanning the lion statue, the teddy bear, the watering pot, the glass, and also two printed objects. So now, uh, once we have started the software, we can see that uh, it has detected our Kinect sensor here. And the next thing that we need to do is to select a scene size. And that means the software needs to know how large is the object or what kind of scene do you want to scan. And you can select presets and you can also do the scaling bar to define the size of the object that you want to scan. And I'm going to select uh, object as my preset because objects are going to be quite small. And then I'm hitting the start button. Now the next thing is to make sure that you have the right scanning distance and you're gonna see that you're cl close uh, once this black area comes into the frame and then you need to move it back a little bit and bring the object basically in the green area. And once we're ready we can hit the space bar and it's going to switch over to the 3D view in full screen mode and I'm going to start circling around the object using the sensor now and I'm speeding up the process now for you, so you don't have to wait so long. Now, once the scan is finished, you can switch over to the Process tab and have a closer look at the object. And you can see that there's a pretty nice detail in this object. And there is actually some pretty useful function in the software. For example, this little hole on the top of the line is uh, something that we can close uh, using a function in the software which makes it waterproof. And once it's done you can see that the hole is now closed perfectly. So now the next function I'd like to show to you is move and crop and what we need it for is we want to get rid of this table surface that's still sticking to our object and to do that we need to uh, align the object's uh, bottom surface with this blue 
surface and then bring the object down until it uh, hits this blue surface and then it's cutting away basically everything that's underneath this blue surface. So this scan is pretty much done and we could now start exporting that to an STL file. However, because of the free version, we are limited to 5000 polygons and that result would be pretty mediocre in terms of the quality. So we would have to have a look at this later and let's continue now with scanning the other objects. Continuing with the teddy bear, I had no issues whatsoever, so that went pretty well. And also when I edited later in the software, it was pretty easy for me to cut off the table um, from this object, uh, getting it into a nice shape. And also you can see that the quality seems to be pretty nice. Now coming to the watering pot and also the glass, I had the issue that I simply had to stop the scanning process at some point because the software just didn't know anymore where the object is and where I actually moved the camera. So these two objects I really had to cancel because of tracking issues. Now the same applies to the two printed objects. Because of the small size of the object, these uh, couldn't be tracked anymore uh, very early in the process, so I had also to stop scanning those objects. So the only thing left to really analyze is the lion statue and also the teddy bear, unfortunately. So let's finally have a look at the STL files that I've exported from SkinAct. Opening up in 3D Viewer, you can see that the lion statue, for example, it has a low poly uh, resolution, so it's definitely not something that I would want to print unless I'm up into low poly printing. And uh, also looking at the teddy bear, here's the same problem. You can clearly see that, I mean, the, the whole object has been captured really decently, but it's lacking resolution. That's because we are not using the pro version of SkinAct. Uh, so I'm going to come to that in a minute, whether I think it's worth buying or not. In overall conclusion, I'd say if you have a Kinect for Xbox One sensor already and you're just missing the adapter cable for the PC, I think it is the cheapest way to start with 3D scanning. Otherwise, if you have this sensor here and you're just missing the small adapter, it's also a valid solution. And I can tell you why I think that ScanAct is actually not that kind of a bad solution, even though it costs you $129. You have seen that the capabilities of the software are actually pretty nice. So it's not only about capturing, uh, it can also handle different situations. You can also scan rooms. Uh, and it has these nice little features like cutting off the base and editing the objects um, before you actually export them. And both methods have their limitations, you know. I mean, these sensors are pretty similar in terms of the camera resolution, so they're gonna produce similar results in terms of the resolution of the objects. They also have the same limitations in terms of the distance that you have to keep, uh, the minimum size of objects. And also you cannot scan anything that's reflective or transparent. Um, so these limitations are the same and there's only one method that probably can beat these cameras here, which is photogrammetry. And we're gonna cover photogrammetry in the next videos, starting with smartphone cameras and then we're going to use more professional cameras with macro lenses and also I'm trying to do something using a drone, so stay tuned for that. I hope you liked the video, so please share, subscribe, like, all the good things, and I hope to see you soon back again on the Crosslink channel. So, happy printing until then. Bye-bye.